old Macedonians and Facebook viewers, those who've taken the time to come and share with us on another session of Midday Manor, we say hello to each and every one of you. Uh, we give our honor and praises to God uh, for being creator, uh, for allowing us to have this opportunity to live in this world as we know it. We're thankful for the love of God in that he gave his son Jesus Christ uh, as a ransom for our souls. Thankful for the love of Christ in that he gave his life that we might live. And certainly grateful for the gift of the Holy Spirit which comforts and teaches us. And so we're so thankful and grateful today that you've taken the time to share with us. Our prayers are always with you. We hope and pray that you and your families are yet still practicing social distancing, protecting yourselves when, when you're going out and making sure that um, you don't encounter uh, someone who may be infected with this deadly disease. Uh, we're getting better as a state, but I would love to see us get better as a country. So we're going to continue to pray that things will continue to progress and get better, uh, where most of us can get back into our local sanctuaries and fellowship one with the other. So we look forward to that day. Until that day, we're going to continue to be prayerful. I want to say a belated happy birthday to Miss Winnie Walker, uh, who celebrated a birthday, I believe, on August the 24th. And so we salute her today, and we thank God for her, and we pray that the Lord will allow her to see many more years of her birth. And so we say happy birthday to Miss Winnie Walker. Uh, just want to send a shout out uh, to say hello uh, to Mother McClellan and her husband. So good to to know that I know good people. Uh, shout out to Reverend. Sister uh, Pruitt, um, two faithful people that we love, and we, we certainly appreciate uh, Rose and, and Robert Gibson. Uh, missing you all, David Randolph and Barbara. And certainly, we're missing uh, Brother Carney. We're missing Sam, and just all of you. I'm just calling out a few names. If I don't call your name today, uh, uh, it's okay. I I'll be calling your name uh, in the future. Mr. and Mrs. Douglas. Certainly missing them right now. Alvino and Linda. Just shouts out to each of you. Uh, so certainly we miss you. Sheila Lancaster is doing a great job. Uh, her and Rose Anderson doing a great job in communicating through the women's ministry, and we thank God for you all as well. Uh, let us let us uh, prepare to go to Scripture, but before we do so, let me uh, also give you an announcement. I want to thank those, again, who are contributing uh, by delivering canned goods uh, for our uh, attempt to raise or to collect enough canned goods to take to, to RIFA uh, in support of their efforts of feeding the homeless. Uh, next month is actually uh, their food drive, and their desire is to get more than 100,000 pounds of food or, or canned goods, whatever whatever you can supply. In fact, I've got a list of things that you can bring. I've asked you to bring the large institutional canned goods, but here are some other things that you can actually um, donate to Rifle, and you can again bring them here. Um, canned vegetables, canned fruit, canned meats, canned soups, canned beans, pasta, peanut butter, and jelly. So those are the things that RIFA needs, uh, the things that they're looking for, and this is RIFA's One City, One Food Drive, uh, which is uh, for the month or in the month of September. And so they're, they're celebrating Hunger Action Month in the month of February and so they are trying to collect or raise 100,000 pounds of food through Rife's uh, first ever One City Food Drive. So that's what we'll be doing. We'll be collecting um, all the way through the month of September and we will make a, give our contribution to uh, Rife uh, when that time comes. Right now they're sitting at 731 pounds and uh, they, they got a long way to go. 
as far as collecting. So we ask that you would uh, collect, uh, that you would uh, actually petition others to give as well, and certainly we would be glad to receive them and then when the time comes to give that to Rifle. So thank you in advance. Uh, we're in the book of Galatians. We're going to the third chapter today. So for those of you that have your Bible, let us go to the third chapter. Before we begin, let us, let us go to God in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity we have to share again in the word of God. We pray that by your Holy Spirit you would speak to our hearts. But we ask now that you would give each of us a spiritual ear to hear what you have to say. Dear Lord, our prayer is that we will apply it to our lifestyle, that the world may see you living and working through us. Bless all families represented. Bless every home. Lord, all over this nation, Lord, keep us in your care. Guide us and direct us by your hand. We know if you guide us, we shall be led. And Lord, we shall follow as you lead us. Therefore, we thank you now, Lord. We give you the praise for all things. For all things we ask in the precious name of Jesus Christ, we do pray. Amen. Galatians chapter 3. Uh, today, we're really going to be looking at uh, six, six arguments uh, to prove that grace, grace is justification by faith is superior to the law. Um, again, um, traditional Jewish uh, believers are trying to burden Gentile believers with the law, with the yoke of the law. And Paul is saying that these Christians have been justified by their faith. And it takes faith in Christ to be justified. And so uh, here's, uh, there's, here's going to be six arguments, excuse me, that um, Paul gives uh, to the Jewish believers there in Galatia. First of all, he, start, he begins off talking with the Galatians. And so if we'll look at verse, first, uh, three, uh, first five verses, excuse me, first five verses of chapter three. Uh, these are the words you shall find inscribed from the original King James Version of the Bible. O foolish Galatians! who have bewitched you, that you should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you. This only would I learn of you. Receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith. Are you foolish? Having begun in the Spirit, Ye are now made perfect by the flesh. Have you suffered so many things in vain? If it be yet in vain, he therefore that ministereth to, the, to you in the spirit and worketh miracles among you, doth he it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? So Paul kind of talks to them about their personal experience and he wanted the Galatians to understand and believe that uh, they were originally saved by the faith their faith in Christ not by the law therefore Paul says your great your faith in Christ is superior to that of the law he tells them to not be influenced by those who are subjecting them to the law um, their faith in God is superior to the law that's what Paul wanted to let the Galatians know just keep your faith in God for your faith in God is is superior uh, to the law it's much better that's the first argument uh, the first argument is that our faith is superior to the works of the law so look at verses six, 6 through 9. Well, Paul says, Even as Abraham believed, even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness, know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are, un, are the children of Abraham. And the scripture therefore, or the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham saying 
in thee shall all nations be blessed. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. Hmm. Well, you know, there's an argument about Abraham and being the chosen children of God. God had commanded Abraham to circumcise the flesh of all of his male children and all of his male servants to signify that they were separated or separate from the world. That is one of the arguments that the Jews have in the fact that you know, Jews are circumcised and then they identify themselves by being direct descendants of Father Abraham. Paul flips the script and says, listen, Abraham was justified not by the uh, circumcision of the flesh, but Abraham was justified by his faith in God. You know that he was asked to offer up his only begotten son, Isaac, and he went through uh, the process of sacrificing him. And because God saw that he would be faithful, uh, he, he provided a ram in the bush. And so instead of his son, God present, presented a, a sacrifice instead of his son. And therefore, God honored him as being the father of faith and being faithful. When God told Abraham that he would be the father of many nations, he really thought that it would be through his generational seed. He thought that uh, Isaac and Ishmael, or more so Isaac, would continue his bloodline and there would be many children thereof. Well, it did happen. Uh, Isaac had uh, several children, uh, but, uh, and his descendants did grow to be great. But that was not what God was talking about. God was talking about all nations falling under Abraham because of Abraham's faith in God. So Paul says, uh, Jews, I know you have direct uh, descendants, uh, direct, direct relation by blood. But Paul says that now the Gentiles have been identified with Abraham because of their faith in Christ. So therefore, even though it's not by biological blood, but through the blood of Jesus and their faith in Christ, because they have faith, they're all now children of Father Abraham, who was the father of faith. So Gentiles and Jews both who lived by faith became children of Father Abraham. Mm. One thing you got to remember, Abraham, who lived before the law, was saved by faith. Remember, he saved by faith. It just said he was justified. It was counted for righteousness in, in verse 6. Uh, but it was done that the blessings of Abraham, that inheritance, that sonship, and eternal life were received by faith. Therefore, grace, again, is superior to the law. Hmm. Let's look at 10.14 Paul writes For as many as are of the works of the law Are under the curse For it is written Cursed is everyone that continueth Not in all things which are written in the books Or in the book of the law To do them but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident that the just shall live by faith. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree, that the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles, through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. 
re the uh, argument now is um, being removed from the curse of the law. Those who uh, live by the law were accursed. Uh, so it was understood that the law could not justify. It can only bring judgment. Therefore, again, grace is superior to the law. Therefore, since the law can only, uh, can only bring judgment, Christ became a curse for us that we might not be judged in the last day, but that he might be a, a curse for us. Therefore, he died for us, that the curse may not be on us, but through our faith in him. If we have faith in him, then the curse of the law has been removed from us. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. And it was done that because of our faith through Jesus Christ, we might receive the blessings of Father Abraham. What is the blessing of Father Abraham? He promised him land that we might be landowners. He promised him seed, um, that we may sow seed, not just physically, but be an example through faith, just as Abraham was an example by faith, uh, that others might receive the blessing. Our lifestyle, the way we live, uh, our testimony is planting a seed in someone that that person may have an opportunity to come to Christ. It was land, it was seed, and it was blessing. It means everything that we need, God would give it if we would just walk in faith. We would get land, we would get seed, and we would also receive seed the blessing. Uh, Abraham was wealthy. Uh, we can also receive that wealth if we walk by faith and not by sight and realize that we are justified by our faith in Christ. So we receive the same blessings that were, was bestowed upon his descendants is bestowed upon us because of our faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, let's look at 15 through 18. He says, Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant, yet it be confirmed. No man disannulleth or addeth thereto. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made, he said, and to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before God in Christ, the law, which was 430 years after, cannot annul or disannul, that it should make the promise of none effect. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more a promise. But God gave it to Abraham by promise. Abraham was saved by faith 430 years before the law was even given to Moses. Therefore, again, grace is superior to the law. Mm, mm. That covenant yet still remains. Therefore, the law cannot annul the fact that Abraham was saved by faith before the law was yet even presented. Let us look at the purpose of the law. Verses 19 through 25. Bear with me if you will. The text reads, Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. And it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. But the scripture said, but the scripture have concluded under, under sin, excuse me. Let me go back to 22. 
It says, but the scripture have concluded all under sin that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. After that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. Mm. The law's purpose was never to save. Its purpose has always been to be a standard that would show us the magnitude of our sin, our need for grace, and thus lead us to Christ. The law was a temporary means, a temporary measure only until faith in Christ was inaugurated. Therefore, again, grace is superior to the law because the law never intended to save. It intended, according to what we've just read, to point us to Christ, pointed out our sin, and led us to the need for Christ. Thank God. 26 through 29, for the text says, For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many as you for as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ, then ye are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. My brothers and sisters, grace appropriated through faith makes us adult children of God and unites us as brothers and sisters. The law never brought this vertical and horizontal oneness. Therefore, grace, again, is superior to the law. When he talks about vertical and horizontal. He's talking about our relationship with God, which is vertical our relationship with mankind which is horizontal and when you put horizontal and vertical together you form a cross it was on that cross that Jesus died for our sins that we may no longer be accursed and held under the curse of the law but that we may be made free because of our faith in him and if we be free we also become heirs to the promise that God made to Abraham and by being promised by being an heir we receive everything that God promised to father Abraham so we are children of God through our faith in Christ and it is our faith that granted grants us the opportunity to be heirs of the promise that God gave to Abraham wow Thank you, Paul, for clearing this up. You know, many of us want to put bonds on people, put chains on people when it comes to their salvation and their uh, walk with Christ. Um, we want to uh, be able to put rules together and tell people they must do this and must do that. Paul made it plain today that we are justified to be called the children of God merely by our faith in him. And our faith in him justifies us to be called the children of God. And our faith is superior to the law. It was hard for the Jews to believe that. Uh, they still can't get it. But Paul is going to continue to preach it. That listen, the Galatians came in by faith only. You came in through the law. But now you have to also realize that the law never intended to save you, O Jewish nation. But it was supposed to lead you to a need for a Savior. And that Savior is Jesus Christ. My brothers and my sisters, I hope you've enjoyed this time we've shared today. Uh, 
Uh, we're certainly grateful and thankful for the opportunity we have to continue to share in the Word of God. Again, we hope that you and your families are doing well. Our prayers are always with you. And certainly, we want you to know that we love you. We appreciate you taking out the time to share with us in the Word of God. Pray for us that we can continue to do more virtually, to keep you involved, and to, again, make an attempt to bring us together uh, through a virtual worship and virtual, uh, virtual uh, teaching sessions. So pray for us as we uh, continue to network and to make these things happen. Until we, again, until we meet again, excuse me, be safe, be careful, but most importantly, be blessed is my prayer. Until we meet again, may God bless you and may heaven smile on you is always our prayer.